The airplane is a feat of modern engineering, a symbol of humanity's ongoing innovation, a gateway to anywhere in the world. And a condom condemnation, condemned nation to screaming babies, a constant whirring drone, and uh, megalobies of bacteria. Megalopolis of bacteria. Whichever you choose to believe in more, these top 10 terrifying facts show just how skin crawling the fruit of our modern nation can be. So here without further ado, here are top 10 terrifying facts about airplanes. Number 10, there is no safest seat. Every plane crash is unique, and the safest seat is impossible to calculate until the wreck actually occurs. The most advanced position will be dependent on the type of accident. It varies if the jet succumbs to nosedive, rolls, or land on water. However, estimations have been made on the most secure place to be. In 2012, a group of researchers used an uncrewed Boeing 747 rep replete with crash dummies and crashed it in an attempt an attempted emergency landing into the Mexican desert. The front of the plane was found to be the fa to fare the most poorly. The cockpit was mangled, some seats were flung hundreds of feet, and because of the sheer destruction, live passengers would have been like would have likely been seriously injured or killed. These findings are supported by a 2015 analysis by Time magazine by Times magazine of the Federal Aviation Administration CSR TG aircraft accident database. They found that the middle seats near the rear of the plane had the lowest fatality rates at 28%. This is in comparison to a rate of 44% in aisle seats in the middle of the plane. Ultimately, one's lifetime chance of being in a plane crash is 1 in 1800 in comparison to 1 in 112 in a car. So these statistics may just be cl clutching at straws. Number nine, the toilet is not the dirtiest place. The location people go to relieve themselves is not the dirtiest place on a plane is surely an alarming statistic. A 2015 study by Trouble Math found that although, although flush handles had 265 bacteria colony forming units, CFU, per square inch, there were two other gut-wrenching locations with even more pathogens. Seat back trays were the most happily bacteria colonized places on the aircrafts, with 2,155 CFU per square inch. That's an eye opening eight times higher than the flush handles. This is likely because of cleaning limitations between flight staff have the opportunity to remove rubbish, but not to perform a more thorough sterilization. Disgust disgustingly, an Arbor, a Arburn University study found that bacteria in this location lasted for, for, for longer than any other, at seven days. Overhead vents were also less than hygienic, at 285 CFU, while seat belt buckles and headrests found with E. coli present also raised red flags. With between 150 and 350 people on board each flight, the potential for germ spreading is almost infinite and horrid. Number eight, that plastic wrap blanket might not be new. Airplane blankets have an authority that rivals that of Al Capone. Notoriety, I'm sorry. An inquiry by the Wall Street Journal's unit of investigation, investigative journalists, found that the majority of these polyester fleeces are washed merely once each five to 30 days. On top of this, they are reused between washes for a slew of individual passengers. One lucky passenger will be fortunate enough to receive the blanket on the magical day that it is clean. But each thereafter will be subjected to increasing bouts of nastiness. Federal law requires that these measly quilts are treated with a chemical flame retardant. But this is the single requirement for the industry. Most people regard cell cellophane wrapped blankets as being clean. But lab testing of sealed blankets have shown yeast, mold, and other bacteria. Laundry employees for one airline have also stated that only 20% of blankets, ones with distinct stains, are washed. What's worse, some airplanes are charging their passengers for blankets. Take this advice and BYOB. Bring your own blanket. Number seven, pilots sometimes fall asleep at the controls. Boredom at work is one of the most prolific issues that can plague some employees. Plane cockpit isn't exactly the ideal place to catch some shut-eye. 
A survey was conducted by the European Cockpit Association in 2012. Involved 6,000 pilots being assessed for a fatigue barometer. Three out of five pilots in Sweden and Norway admitted to making mistakes in the line of work due to fatigue. And in Germany, the statistic was four out of five. But there were more alarming figures involved. More than 40% of British pilots confessed to visiting slumberland at the controls of a passenger jet. Even more drastically, one-third of these admitted to waking up and finding their co-pilot also comatose. Although pilots are permitted to catch disease while flying, at least one pilot must be awake at all times. These results were so extensive that ECA described it as the most common, dangerous, and underreported phenomenon in Europe. Until COVID-19 arrived, that is, although the underreported aspect doesn't exactly transfer. Number six, you may be flying with only one engine. Transoceanic flights have typically been flown by three or four engine wide body airlines. Aviation reasoning dictates that this is there is strength in numbers. But these multi-engine jets are becoming extinct and are replaced by more fuel-efficient two-engine aircraft. Modern engineering prevents engine failure from being a regular occurrence, but even if one were to fail, today's jets can take off, fly, and land with just one engine. Even if dual failure occurred, a plane can glide perfectly without, as long as air is passing over its wings. The bird will remain in flight, and so a plane with no propulsion will change its altitude for this to continue. It can even remain in the air for between 20 and 30 minutes before reaching the ground. Many are aware of the controversial and arguably infamous Hudson River landing in New York in 2009, but although the prospect of flying with a single turbine or less is daunting, the fuzzy little microorganisms residing elsewhere in the plane are likely to be far more deadly. Number five, turbulence is getting worse. Upteen air-bound travelers are aware of the unfortunate scenario. A sudden public announcement, a maddening dash to fashion seatbelts, and the topple of drinks to the floor. Air turbulence is already a nuisance, and it won't be succumbing anytime soon. Scientists now believe the extreme turbulence is due to an increase by several hundred percent in the crowded airspace over North America, Europe, and the North Pacific by the mid-century, when the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere is predicted to be double its pre-industrial concentration. The current estimated economic cost of turbulence is $200 million, each 365 days for United States airline al airlines alone, and this is expected to skyrocket alongside the growing extent of mid-air turmoil. The irony of the pr predicament is difficult to ignore. According to a paper published in the Environmental Science and Technology Journal, planes are 50 times worse than cars per passenger mile in terms of a five-year warming impact. And so planes are creating their own problem just by their very existence. Number four, the water is not so crystal clean. In the aforementioned expose on aircraft bacteria was not vehement enough, consider this, the substance that you ingest on a plane, namely water, may not be tainless. A 2019 airline water study investigated the quality of tap water in both major and regional U.S. carriers, and the researchers were in for a startling conclusion. They found varying levels of E. coli in coliform, both of which are present in feces in the aircraft's Adams Ale. This water is supplied through faucets in the galley and lavatories. The water used to wash one's hands and make hot, hot beverages, including coffee and tea. Suddenly, it's easy to understand why many flight attendants intentionally don't share in the joy of consuming these delightful refreshments. Number three, your food may have been cooked three days before you consume it on board. It is not exactly cloak and dagger that dishes served on aircraft are bland, unappetizing, and generally the yuckiest thing, yuckiest thing known to man. What is not customary is finding 1,500 food violations over a period of four years, as was experienced by the FDA between 2008 and 2012. The organization investigated a number of separate food preparation facilities, all of which supply airlines, finding the following on numerous occasions. Dirty utensils, mice, roaches, ants, feces, moldy products, and unrefrigerated food. 
Food is being assaulted on more than one front, however. Scientists have now shown that due to sensation transference, plastic cutlery causes food to taste worse. Another attack on food in the sky takes place in the form of moisture. French chef Raymond Oliver is credited with inventing wetter is better in relation to airplane food because saucy meals inevitably dry out to a lesser extent and taste better. Finally, supposed freshly prepared food may have been cooked between 12 and 72 hours before you consume it. Yummy. Number two, you may only have 90 seconds to escape a burning plane. Although pathogens are indeed disgusting, they are incomparably less likely to kill you than an air f- than a flame plane. Not to spread utter panic, but the Federal Aviation Administration obligates that a plane can be evacuated in one minute and 30 seconds. The reason, this is the time it takes for fire to engulf and spread through an aircraft cabin. To maximize your chances, sitting within five rows of an exit is the most strategical option. Otherwise, that can be left to your imagination. And number one, your oxygen mask will only last between 12 and 20 minutes. That's right, those precious oxygen masks, although not as cherished as COVID-19 face masks, only buy you between 12 and 20 minutes of breathing. Fortunately, this is usually a a significant enough duration for your pilot to glide the plane to an altitude at which the supplementary oxygen isn't necessary. The alleged oxygen does not actually start out as this, but is instead stored as a cocktail of chemicals and converted to a breathable gas. If you dare to step onto a plane without wearing a hazmat suit ever again, good luck, you brave soul.